All right, guys, so about two weeks ago, I had this big cardboard box to throw away. So I have this trash service that comes and picks up my trash every week. So I just set it right next to my trash, and they just took my trash, but they left the box. So I'm like, all right, maybe if I put it inside the trash can, then, uh, then they'll do it. So last week, that's what I did. I ripped it up. I put it in the trash can. And then when they came, they just took the one with the trash and left the cardboard. So, so I was like, all right, it must be like, um, I not, must not be allowed to throw away cardboard or something. So what I did is I, this week I ripped it up and I stuffed it inside a bag. And then I put the bag inside my garbage can. And this morning the dude knocks on my door and he goes, sir, can you stop trying to throw away your cardboard, please? So that was kind of embarrassing. However, I think if I just give up now, then it'll be like admitting defeat. So if anyone has any really interesting um, techniques I can use to secretly throw away my cardboard, let me know because I'm going to win this battle, Mr. Trash Man. So, again, that wasn't like an analogy or something. That's just a stupid story. Nothing to do with Python. So let's go ahead and get started learning Python. Okay, in this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about the if statement. Now, the if statement is a cool keyword, if, and it's a way to have your computer program make a very simple decision. Now, pretty interesting, pretty unique if I just say that. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the cool thing is, since we have this IDE, we can make programs longer than just one line. And whenever we hit enter, of course, it doesn't just execute automatically. So say that we wanted to build a program that takes a user's age and we'll say that we're like selling beer online or something even though that's illegal we'll do it anyways so if the user's age is above 21 then we'll say um you can buy beer if not then we'll say okay you're not allowed to buy beer because you have to be 21 so what we need to do is we need a way to check this and execute some code based on another variable sounds confusing but check it out so whenever you want to have your computer make a decision, the first thing you do is add the keyword if. Now, directly after this, we need to give it something to test. So right now, we're just going to test if this age is less than 21. So if the age is less than 21, then we want to do something. We'll just like print out no beer for you since like they're too young. So right after your test, add a colon. Now hit enter. And you can see that your cursor doesn't go to the next line. It's automatically indented in one tab. Now, anything that's indented in one tab, your computer knows, okay, only execute this code if this test is true. So this code that we type right here is only going to run if the user's age is less than 21. So what do we want to happen if the user's age is less than 21? We'll just print no beer for you. All right, so this is a valid print statement and it does indeed print text out on the screen. However, check it out. Whenever you run it, nothing's displaying in our console at the bottom. And that's because even though we wrote this line of code, it didn't execute because the age was over 21. So we didn't need to give him this little warning. Now, if we have some little kid who's like 13, try to use the site, it's gonna say, okay, if 13 is less than 21, that's true, 13 is indeed less than 21, then that's when we want to print this, no beer for you. So whenever we run this, it says, okay, check this, and okay, that is true, so run this line of code. So again, whenever the test is true, run it. Whenever it's false, just move on. So it executes what's ever down here. Now, what if we wanted to have the computer decide between one of two things? Because of course, Whenever the user is less than 21, we gave them the warning message, but what about for the people who are older than 21? How do we make them, you know, use the site or something like that? Well, we can add another condition called ELIF, and this checks something else. And it'll probably be easier to see if I use a new example. So let's make a new variable called name. Hey, take it easy, caps lock. Name, and we'll set this equal to Lucy. So let's um, check if, we'll say we'll check if their name is Bucky or Lucy. How do we do that? Well, we already know how to check if name. 
Now, I'll tell you guys about another type of test. So, with numbers, we can do less than, greater than. However, since this is a string, we want to see if it's equal to something else. So, the keyword for this is is. So, this is pretty much going to check this name and see if it's equal to something else. And of course, add your colon. So, again, less than, greater than for numbers and with strings you can use this keyword is you can actually use is when comparing two numbers as well so what we're going to do is say okay if the name is Bucky then print um a there Bucky now in order to test another option what you can use is the keyword el if and this pretty much means else if or it's just another way of having um, another if statement in one um, block of code. So else if the name is Lucy print, what are we going to print for Lucy? Something ghetto like what up loose dog. Alright so okay I think that's ghetto enough. So pretty much it checks the name. If it's Bucky print this statement to him. If it's Lucy, print this statement to him. And we can actually have as many of these L ifs if we want. So we'll say, okay, if it's Sammy, be like, what up, Slammy? So pretty much it's going to go one by one and only execute a certain block of code whenever the condition is true. So hit run. And of course, the name is Lucy. So it said, what up, loose dog? So pretty much it ran through top to bottom and said, OK, is this true? Nope. So go down here. Is this true? Yes. So do this. And of course, since this was not true, it skipped this one as well. OK, simple enough. So now we have a way where we not only can make a decision, like in that beer example, but we can also make a decision to decide between more than one option. Now. There's one other thing I want to talk to you guys about, and that is, well, what if we ran through all the options and none of them are true, but we still want to execute a certain bit of code? Well, we can do something like this. After all of your L ifs, you can have one last condition called else. What else means is if you ran through every other option and none of those were true, then do this one. So we can just run something like print. We'll say that this is actually a site. And um, if the user logs in, then we can give them a custom message. And of course, if none of these names are true, then that just means uh, they didn't sign up for the site yet. So um, please sign up for the site. So of course, with Lucy, whenever you run it, it's going to give her that custom welcome message. However, if we have a new new guy named like Tommy D, what it's going to do is say, are you this user? Nope. Check if, if you're this user. Nope. Check if you're this user. And since all of these options are false, whenever you run this, it's going to say, please sign up for the site. All right. So I know that was a lot of take in, but that is pretty much how you can ha have your computer make one decision multiple decisions or multiple decisions with a default answer. So I'm going to go scratch my head and think about how I can trick my garbage man. And uh, again, if you have any questions or you want the source code to this, I'm going to be posting it on my forum. So I'll see you later.